Good evening, everyone. Welcome to FGM Ecast for your Thursday nights, Thursday night Anscar Cup Series night here on the channel. We're back at New Hampshire, and I'm joined once again by Carl Withy. Carl, good evening. Good evening, Stuart. Good evening, everybody. And yes, we are back here at the Magic Mile, New Hampshire. Will we see some great door-to-door -door action? A little bit of banging, a little bit of scraping, and some great side-by-side -side action once again tonight. Yeah, you can only hope so. The uh, Mitch Motorsport guys putting on a great show last night. Of course, the uh, DPR, the strength of the DPR returns tonight with uh, Neil Pearson and uh, Phil Worley and the like. So uh, there's uh, plenty of uh, strength in the field. So I reckon we will get that car. We've got uh, 2 minutes 50 to go here in warm-up. We've already had qualifying done. We will bring you through those results when we do grid up. But uh, might be time to quickly touch on the current championship standings. Yes, the championship standings for the regular season, of course. We've 21 races in, uh, and then we'll be going into the chase shortly. But this is the regular championship as it stands. Remember, the top 10 go through to the chase. So currently, Josh Wickelmore is in the lead with 766 points. 58 points back is Jason Martin in second. Third is Michael Skirlock, 71 off the lead. 81 off the lead, and fourth is Hamish Gallagher. Fifth, Danny G, 91 off the lead. Sixth, we have Edward Foster, 99 points down. Neil Pearson is in seventh, 114 off the lead. Eighth is Andrew Dyson, 142 points down. Matty Raymond, ninth, 150. And Luke Traher, 184 off the lead. So it's still some room for shuffling up there. And of course, when drop rounds come into, into effect, we will see a little change here and there. But currently, those top 10 are looking relatively safe. They've got some good gaps between them to P11, so it will be interesting to see what happens once those drop rounds come into effect. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, some changes to come there, and of course we're looking forward to getting into the chase uh, coming up in uh, a number of weeks, but uh, coming up sooner than we know it with the rate that things are going this year, and uh, it's uh, flying by, that is for sure, just having a look here at Paul Jackson in the 231 gets a little loose there we saw some really really good running here last night there was a lot of a lot of two car battles actually carl we saw last night in the uh, xfinity cars are we expecting to see that again tonight yeah we're going to see some door to door action we're going to see some side by side action tonight i reckon uh it is a little bit trickier sometimes in these cup cars because they have got a little bit more power and that can sometimes catch you out on the exit of the corner so you put your foot down and then all of a sudden those tires will spin up a little bit quicker because you've got an extra I think it's an extra 100 odd horsepower in these things so they are quite quite powerful little things as Mirko Dorton that just proves they're just getting on the power a tiny bit too early and uh, Dave Douglas does the same thing and goes straight into Mirko there so those two finding each other on track Mirko there just resets out. into pit lane sorry I was just uh, there <laughs> That's okay. But yeah, it's a tricky one tonight, and the drivers seem to be struggling with the rears at the moment. From what I've seen, drivers are really struggling with rear grip. Uh, track temperature is only 38 degrees, uh, only 38 degrees, so it's a little bit cooler than we saw last night. But this track, it is one of those tracks that's very low, very, sorry, very low banking, so it's not got a very high angle to the banking, so it's a very flat track. And it's very easy for the car to get unsettled as well. So all it takes is the slightest little nudge, <laughs> and all of a sudden you go turning around like that or a little bit too much pressure on the accelerator and then you are going around in a circle good uh, couple of examples just popping on screen at the right time there uh, for you to have a look at so you can just see on the left hand side of screen there the uh, grid as it stands we're going to just have a uh, look at it proper though let's bring it up on screen as uh, we get into the next round of cup series yeah, the top three covered by absolutely nothing. The pole position time was a 29.870. Then we had an 8.74 and 8.77 for the top three. So absolutely nothing between them. So let's run through the order. So it's Jason Martin on pole with Neil Pearson on the outside. Hamish Gallagher, Josh Mickle more on the second row. Third row is Ryan Jones, Michael Skurlock. Fourth, Dyson Foster. Fifth, we have Carol Walton and Hettersheed. Sixth is Wally Curtis. Seventh is Traher Griffiths. Ninth, uh, sorry, eighth is Russell Danny G. Ninth is Phelps and Schultz. Tenth, we have Raymond Urquio. Eleventh, Hunter Will Williams. Twelfth is Witcher and Otto. Thirteenth is Cock and Dorsnack. Fourteenth, Spencer and Jackson. And on the back row, we've got Nigel Patton and Dave Douglas. 
Running out the uh, 30 strong field there on the uh, Thursday night run as we're uh, getting used to it being. Let's get this up on the screen here as it should look and uh, we've done that right there. So we're uh, behind Martin and Pearson on the front row here tonight and uh, Hamish Gallagher, Josh Micklemore in the uh, next two positions. We saw them battle away last night. Uh, with great effect, a good race indeed on the uh, Mitch Motorsport guys there against one another, and uh, they're going to face plenty of stiff competition here tonight from the likes of uh, Ryan Jones, Edward Foster, Dyson, Carroll Walden as well. There's plenty right throughout the field. Even Phil Wally starting it down there in 12th, so he's got a little bit of work to do, but don't be too sure that he won't make his way back up to the front of this field as well. So uh, yeah, plenty to go here. On FGM Ecast, there's 150 laps tonight for you to sink your teeth into. So don't go far. Stick with us as uh, we get uh, the next round of Anscar Cup Series underway. You'll see the pace car will peel off to the inside here. And it will be Jason Martin who will lead us away. And he goes quickly here, Martin, and gets a run. Hamish Gallagher, what a start from him. He's gone straight with him. Of course, the teammates there would have been counting. And you just see there Josh Mickamore trying to get down underneath Neil Pearson as well. He looks like he's going to get the job done there. You've got Ryan Jones in the M&M liveried entry. Michael Skurlock looking to get a run. And just down there getting a little loose was Michael Skurlock. So he's dropped down to the inside there and dropped a couple of positions early. Yeah, Scully's going to have to drop back. Those rear tyres are going to get a little bit hot, a little bit too quick. He's going to need to let them reset a little bit. So Scully's going to drop way, way back in the field there. And that's how easy it is to lose these cars on this track. It is such a tricky track to master, but it is an extremely fun one. Watch out for Jason Martin. He is quite quick on this style of track. We saw his teammates of Gallagher and Micklemore fighting it out last night, but Jason Martin is very quick indeed. So look for him out the front. Also watch out for those road specialists as well. They'll tend to have a good run here because this is almost like a road circuit, uh, despite being an oval, because you've got a lot of heavy braking zones. You've got to get the acceleration zone just right as well. So it's a little bit like a road circuit mixed with an oval, this one. Yeah, as you just see, Edward, Di Edward Foster, I should say. And uh, we also had Andrew Dyson there just closing up on the back of Ryan Jones. And uh, they're fighting with Josh Micklemore as well. So we've got a quartet here of cars trying to get themselves up inside that top four early on. And see too many drivers managing much last night. They just ran it with it. It was a really, really strong race. So expecting to see that tonight here as well as the 41, 041 of Andrew Dyson now pulls in behind Ryan Jones. Try and make that work. Highline was uh, more effective here last night as well, Carl. Yeah, very much so. Highline needs a little bit less tyre. A little bit of contact between Foster and uh, Micklemore, and that's dropped Micklemore back a little bit. Uh, it just looked like Micklemore might have missed a gear or something. Just lost a little bit of speed, and it just caught Foster unaware. So those two made a slight little bit of contact. Nothing major, nothing serious between the two, and they were quickly on the radio to each other saying sorry. Um, but yeah, just dropped them back a little bit off the pace. Meanwhile, Martin is running away a little bit at the front, but watch out for people like Jones. We've seen Ryan Jones... He is well known for burning his tyres off in stints, but he has been doing a better job of keeping them alive a little bit longer recently. He's been practising for the long run. There's a good Ooh, battle going on between there. JCW and Philip yeah. Wally. Yeah, a little bit of contact between the two. Philip Wally getting a little bit of a dent on the inside. They're going to go door Ooh. to door there. Really getting heated between those two drivers at the moment. Yeah, of course, those two joining together. And, of course, one thing we haven't announced... Um, we've actually got the 35 and the 035. Daniel Hedeshe jumping into the Natari Autosport Race Magazine-sponsored entry uh, for the remainder of the season. So uh, they're teammates now, actually, JCW and Daniel Hedeshe running head-to-toe uh, -to -toe here as uh, they put the pressure on Phil Wally. Huge signing for Natari there. Hedeshe has shown some really good pace in the last few races and uh, experienced on the old road side of things as well, Hedeshe. So good to see him there and good to see him getting in with a team and hopefully that will bring him some good prosperity and help out the team as well. Yeah, I was going to say, Ed Foster is pretty happy at the moment. He's uh, running up in sixth position, but he's got two of his teammates now in ninth and tenth, so albeit it's not necessarily a track where you're going to get advantage from drafting. Um, we did see uh, teamwork being able to use, uh, used to good effect to um, hold uh, uh, you know cars into that high line or, or help manoeuvre vehicles through into uh, different positions. So uh, Ed DeFoster will be happy that uh, he's uh, got some company up the front. 
Yeah, it's going to help him out a little bit. It just gives him a few little options. The battle is still going on between Wally and JCW. The 2 3 3 and 35 are back at it again. JCW just trying to get back on Wally now. A bit of contact between those two, so keep an eye on this one. When you tend to make contact with another driver out on track, sometimes they remember that. And uh, it's a little bit like a telltale game. They, they remember that uh, moment and then it comes back to bite you a little bit later in the race sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Drivers have very, very long memories for things like that. So uh, it's uh, been smooth sailing at the start here. Everyone's sort of just biding their time, getting into line. A couple of uh, loose exits, but nothing too dramatic. And uh, just uh, a little bit of rubbing as well. So uh, it's been a good start here. We're nine laps through. About to uh, start the 10th lap, in fact. And uh, the, uh, the racing is looking good. It is looking good. They've got a recovering 350 of Michael Scurlock down the pack. He's currently in 14th position. He's trying to make a move on Jaden Russell at the moment. They're going to go side by side right now. Scurley, the Welsh wonder, of course, is going to get underneath Russell here. Try and make that move. Will he be able to get the run on the straight and get in there? Looks like he's going to get it just right here. He's going to come sliding up just in front of Jaden Russell at the moment just to try and block him off a little bit. That might give Aiden Schultz a chance to get a run as well. Uh, Scott Griffiths, we saw, had some good speed as well. He's just behind this group, so keep an eye out for him a little bit later in this stint. Yeah, Scotty had a good run last night as well, so uh, see how he goes tonight in this series. Aiden Schultz getting a little bit unlucky in the trucks on Monday night, so he'll be looking for a nice clean run here as well. JCW just having a big, big moment coming out of uh, turn number two, I think it was. Just lost the rear end for a moment. He managed to keep it going, but he's lost a handful of positions. He's just dropped down there in front of Luke Traher at the moment. So he's just lost a couple of positions. And you can see just behind them, Skirley is making a move on Riley Curtis as well. So Skirley is definitely on the march at the moment. He has gone full red mist and is deciding he's going to have to try and get those positions back to get up to the front of the field once more. We just on board there and saw uh, Phil Wally make the move past Josh Micklemore. So he's now moved up four positions into P7. He's on the hunt now for the back of Edward Foster, who's putting pressure on Ryan Jones, one of his favourite battles to host during a uh, cup round or any round, really. He uh, loves uh, fighting away with Ryan Jones there. Yeah, they've almost got a magnetic tie between each other. It, it's sometimes like that in a race. And, oh, as we've got a car going round in the background, it is Aiden Schultz. And that will bring out our first caution there. Jump back and have a quick look at the cause of that one. It doesn't look like there's too much damage to the 52 Crank Esports entry. No, so when we jump back, I'll talk us through that one. So he's just come out the corner, put his foot on the accelerator just a little bit too quickly. He's managed to lock up the wheels and turn it just at the right time to avoid that barrier. Got on the slippery green stuff, managed to save the car from damage. So good job from him. Uh, but that did bring out the yellow flag for the first time tonight. So just a single car spin, very innocuous, but uh, unfortunately it's, it was enough just to bring out the caution. I was just laughing to myself there, Carl. One of the things I enjoyed most last night was the uh, games that were being played at the front of the field. You recall Edward Foster just pulling out past that cone that's just come into screen there at the uh, marker for pit entry, and he literally missed it by a whisker and um, pull back out onto pit lane playing some uh, some games at the front of the field yeah a little bit of gamesmanship there from those guys and we see that often in in oval racing of course it is a huge huge uh it's a huge part of the uh of the uh strategy you can see scurlock coming in actually he, is he going to take tires that's going to be the big question um we've only done uh, 15 laps so probably gonna just get some fuel but no he is taking some right sides will he take lefts as well that's the big question now for Scurley so he's gonna get some fresh boots on there and try something a little bit different here yeah as you say probably just getting a little bit of that damage repaired as well to get himself back up to speed he won't go down a lap either there's a, a cast of uh, cars going into pit lane to follow that same strategy uh, but uh, none of the leaders at this stage will jump into pit lane these guys will get out and uh, get back onto the back of the field before we go green that's it and, and remember one of the big things of course is they do have a set a limited set of tires in the series so you only get four sets of tires so the set you start on and then you've got three more to put on in pit stops so right now Scurley has burnt one of those sets up so he's now down to two more sets for the rest of the race 
and if we run green for the rest of the race that might work out really well if we get a couple of late cautions that could come to bite him uh, bite him in the behind later later in the race yeah absolutely so we'll see how that plays out for him as we get through the remainder of the evening yeah, still a fair few laps to go 134 laps to go here at new hampshire speedway uh, as we said it's a one mile uh, called the magic mile a bit like a paperclip design if you if you're wondering what the track looks like trying to picture it if you look at a paperclip that's kind of the sort of shape of it there and it's about as flat as a paperclip as well it is a very low banked circuit and that's what gives you that opportunity to run side by side a little bit of course a little bit different in the uh the track as well it's got a granite surface and an asphalt surface so the track can be a little bit tougher on tires but the pace car is coming in jason martin's going to lead away when's he going to drop the loud pedal he does it just after the white line gets a good restart there jumps over the dpr cars behind him hamish gallagher's managed to keep up with him well ryan jones looking a little bit racy behind there as well false start on the outside as we've got a car going around in the background big big accident as skirlock's going round. so skirlock has got caught in that one Skirlock got caught by the 28, so the 28 caught Skirlock in the back. Big, big moment there for Skirly. And that is a big crash there. So yeah, you can see there, he just got punched by Jaden Russell, and Skirly's gone up. Uh, did get caught as well, and uh, he's hit the wall, and that's uh, caught a couple of cars on the way back through as well. So some bad luck there for Skirly. Won't be happy with that at all. Yeah, that was a big accident there. So, yeah, that caught Skirlock right in the back there. That's caught Tristan Koch. Uh, quite a few drivers there have got caught out in that one. That is just, that is just, yeah, that was a big, big accident there. Shows you the difference, doesn't it? The uh, Schultz incident that caused the caution um, was single car, no car damage whatsoever. That one there, Skirly fires up into the concrete barrier. No caution theory at all. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's um, eye racing sometimes can be interesting in that respect. Uh, the fact that no caution came out is a miraculous one. I think, uh, yeah, I, I honestly thought that was going to be a caution in all honesty. I was I'm going back and just checking everything out. So, yeah, the fact that we've got no caution in that one is pretty... Uh, <laughs> eye racing can be a strange beast sometimes. We're on board now with Neil Pearson looking out the back. He's got in front of Hamish Gallagher. Gallagher and Martin sort of drove away at the front of this one before our first caution period. Martin's still doing that now. He's uh, nearly three quarters of a second up the road, but uh, Gallagher here off behind Neil Pearson has moved up into second. And uh, Gallagher is uh, going to come under pressure shortly from that group of cars just uh, chasing him down. Yeah, you can see that Philip Wally is right on the side. He's gone sideways a little bit there. Foster on the outside wall. He's got a bit of rear wheel spin there. He's going to have to try and hold it. This is going to give Micklemore the opportunity to make a bit of a move on Wally right now. Ryan Jones is on the outside. Micklemore on the behind, just behind Wally, and he's desperately trying to get past at the moment. He's going to try and sneak it down the inside, I reckon. Wally is struggling a little bit with those rears by the look of it, because those that back of the car is not solid. It's not holding on through the midsection of the corner, but he's doing a good job of keeping it there. He's managed to just sneak it underneath Ryan jones again jones might lose this position if wally can get the traction down right which he does and just gets right up in front of jones there that just cuts jones's path off wally managing to get that position really good driving from wally there and i think gotta say that's probably a little bit to do with the road racing experience there just able to keep that almost a little bit of a drift going in the mid corner it's not going to do wonders for the tires later in the session but right now that was a good move now micklemore's got to do the same thing he's got to get past ryan jones he's going to try and slide it up under there can't quite do it this time we'll lose a little bit of speed on the exit will ryan jones be able to get it done he's struggling a little bit for rear grip as well by the looks of it that car's just a little bit bouncy at the back but he's keeping it there and all this time Hedersheed is just sitting behind him licking his lips just going yep I'll let you two battle this out wear out your tyres and wear yourselves out and I'll just sit here and just mop up whatever happens and Daniel Hedersheed as you say doing a good job there as well so Micklemore just uh, runs deep under brakes there tries to get it done looks like we he should be able to close it out now yeah it looks like Paul Jackson might have come 
adrift and uh, cause that uh, caution to come out. So we'll jump back and have a look at that one in the replay. Expect to see a number of the drivers jump in, I think, now, Carl, don't you think? We might see a few deciding to come in there, so we'll see how that one goes. So Paul Jackson's just lost the rear here coming out the corner. He's just got on the gas a little bit too early, and you can see he's just gone up on that high line a little bit. He's clipped it. The change of surface on the rear, tire, the rear wheels has just caused the diff to spin up slightly differently on both sides, and then all of a sudden the rear's gone round, and he's hit that barrier. Big, big crash for Paul Jackson, unfortunately. Yeah, a lot of damage on the front of that Camry, so he'll be looking to jump straight into pit lane and uh, get some of that repaired. Yeah, it might be, might be close to a night over for Jackson with that one, unfortunately, in the Aratora uh, racing car. Because, um, yeah, that might be a bit too much damage to get fixed up, sadly. But he'll, no doubt he will try, because you can still get some points, and points are always important in motorsport. And it is actually, yes, there are a couple of drivers coming in. So we've got Neil Pearson coming in, Hamish Gallagher coming in, as well as Ryan Jones, but others have stayed out there. So Jason Martin stayed out there as well as a lot of the other drivers. Well, Jason Martin was three quarters of a second up the road. He had no problem driving away from the pack behind him. So that probably doesn't surprise me too much. Hamish Gallagher maybe more so uh, with uh, just that inability to get past Neil Pearson and uh, that lack of pace uh, to keep up with uh, Martin that seemed to drop off after that first caution period. Yeah, what this what this does do is it means that these guys are going to have a lot of traffic to get through. They're going to have a struggle to actually get through the. Um, they're going to have a big struggle to get get through there because track position is quite kind of important here. So this might be this 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 could work out well for those guys coming in as long as there's no accidents. If there's an accident in the mid-pack, then they could very easily get caught up in it, and that could be their race over. Yeah, that's a good point, and uh, equally, it gives these guys at the front that extra tyre set. So if we go uh, and have another caution a little later on in the race, um, they can get in and know that they're going to be able to you know, take advantage if they get one more caution later on in the race and get another, uh, another fresh set of tyres on. So uh, it uh, certainly has implications for a little later on in the race too. That's it. We've only done 27 laps so far of 150, so there's a long, long way to go. So coming in right here can be a bit of a bit of a risk, in all honesty, and it is, uh, it's a little bit of a dice roll. So we'll see how this pays off for them. You know, it's, it's either going to make you look like a hero or a zero. Yeah, absolutely. So keep, uh, obviously see how this plays out as uh, we get through the balance of the night. One car to watch out for is in P11, Lachlan Urquio at the moment. He's the car on the freshest tyres up the field at the moment. Uh, himself and Justin Witcher as well, just a couple of places behind him. Uh, but they came in with that first caution, threw some tyres on the car, and they're working up the field pretty well at the moment. So they're sitting relatively pretty, so expect to see them have some pace on this restart. Yeah, absolutely. So he has uh, pit on lap 14, so they're not too old. But, of course, there's plenty behind him with brand new tyres. So, see how this uh, rolls there. Looks like Jason Martin just played uh, the mind games there. Just uh, registering a pit lane entry when, obviously, he wasn't going to enter in pit lane. They're forming up now. The lights are out on the pace car. So, uh, to head down the back straight away now, he will be starting to get ready to go. He's not got the protection around him of his teammates. So, Josh Micklemore is in fifth. So, uh... Right, he is behind him, but he's behind Edward Foster first and foremost. He's got the DPR guys as well on the outside line. So how will Martin play this? He's uh, not going to have any uh, any help from his teammates here. He's going to have to get it done. So I reckon, what do you reckon, Carl? He's going to drop the hammer straight away and uh, try and get a run on. I reckon he's going to drop it pretty much as he comes out the corner here, which he does just before that line. So yeah, he's dropped it early to get a good lead over Dyson and Foster. Foster's going to try and battle a little bit. You can see Dyson going up a little bit high. He's going to try for the run off the corner right here, try and get Foster on there, but Foster's able to just slide up in front of him. Foster getting up into second place. You see Josh Micklemore is there working his way back up the field. So those guys working their way up after a little bit of contact and Micklemore just dropping off a little bit, but we know he's quick around here. We know he's got pace. It's, it's Josh Micklemore. He's got pace pretty much every track we go to. 
Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, nothing settled about this result at the moment, that's for sure. So Edward Foster has uh, the hard-charging Andrew Dyson and Philip Worley behind him. Those two guys, as you say, uh, track specialists, you, you've got to say, so expect them to perform well here. Daniel Hedersheet getting into the mix as well. He's right behind Josh Micklemore. So Micklemore moves up to the outside. Hedersheet looking to try and get a run down the inside of Philip Worley. Decides against it at the moment. There's a little bit of a gap opening up. Josh, Jason Martin's got the lead of this one. He's got it covered as well. He's uh, three, six tenths up at the moment. And uh, it is uh, Edward Foster defending from Andrew Dyson. And it's Josh Micklemore, Philip Worley. We've got Daniel Hedersheet, Joshua Carroll Walden, Rolly Curtis, Lachlan Urquio, and Ruben Phelps are your top 10 on the uh, balance of this restart. Yeah, it's not going to be the top 10 for long because we've got uh, Neil Pearson charging his way up there as well. He's just got past uh, Ruben Phelps, I believe. So Neil Pearson is on an absolute fly with Ryan Jones on those fresher tyres. Those guys that came into pit lane are absolutely flying at the moment with those nice sticky uh, tyres full of adhesion. Just getting past uh, Riley Curtis now, Neil Pearson. So he's made his way up into P8. Uh, he's got JCW in front of him now, so Pearson is on an absolute flyer at the moment. Those fresh tyres are paying dividends, and he is using them to his advantage and working his way up the field, most importantly. He just needs this to remain green for a nice long time now, because if we get a caution flag coming out, this is really going to hurt his race. Those guys on those fresh tyres need this to run green for a good, uh, a good 20 to 30 laps at least. Yeah, absolutely. I was just looking there as well. Hamish Gallagher is uh, flashing around in the background there, making his way back up through the field with his fresh tyres. So, strategy looking like it's working at the moment. As you say, if they can stay green here, these guys will get their way up to the front. Yeah, they, they have to pass a lot of cars, though. That's one of the hard things. They will have to put a little bit of extra stress in those tyres passing the cars. So, they will oh, eat on. the ties up a little bit very close there between those guys oh just Pearson just literally just driving past people there's no challenge whatsoever he went right down underneath Philip Wally there just drove past him on the corner like he's standing still in fact he's going to pick up Josh Micklemore here as well if you don't mind so uh, you can see there clearly if you weren't too sure about the advantage of the fresh tyres uh, Neil Pearson giving us a, a good indi indicator of uh, what you get when you get uh, a new set of boots yeah, they're around about a tenth, two tenths faster at the moment than those guys that are on the older tyres. So that gives you an idea of the pace. Jason Martin, he's setting some relatively good lap times as well. So it's not that much difference and the tyres will start to plateau. And that's one of the big things that you have to be careful of is when you push this hard this early is you've got a chance of heating those tyres up a little bit more and then getting them to an operating temperature where they no longer want to work. So you, you sort of might overdo it a little bit, pushing this fast, this quick. But of course, as I said, track position is an important factor as well, because if you have an accident somewhere in the mid pack, you've got more of a chance getting caught up in it when you're a bit further down the field. So if you're up at the front, then you've got that opportunity to get past people and get up for positions. You can see Neil Pearson right now getting underneath Foster. He's just able to run that low line and he's able to stick it down there because of those fresh tyres at the moment. But the longer he does that, the more he's going to wear them. And he might start to struggle a little bit later in the stint. So this is the other thing we've got to watch out for. He might get a good little bit of a run here in the early stages, but in five, 10 laps, he might start to struggle a little bit. So it's definitely not over. This this is, uh, you know, this strategy is looking really good at the moment, but will it pay off in the long run or is this just going to be a short run advantage? It was five tenths up last lap around against Edward Foster. So at this rate, he will close down Jason Martin and take the lead of the race. So uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he can hold out that pace uh, deep into the stint, given uh, what you've just uh, described. Yeah, that's it. It's keeping the pace as the stints go on. The thing that's going to be saving Pearson now is he's got some fresh air in front of him. So he's got some nice, clean, fresh air, some cooler air as well. Ryan Jones as well. He's on an absolute charge in the Kyle Busch inspired, not Kyle Busch, liveried car there with the M&Ms. Uh, he has just got past Andrew Dyson and is getting up there. Same as Hamish Gallagher. Those, those guys are all going incredibly fast at the moment, really pushing at a vast rate of knots. And as I said, those fresh tyres are really going to be useful at this early sorry this early stage but if we get some late cautions these guys could be in trouble running out of tires for instance so it is a little bit of a gamble but you have to gamble sometimes to get a race working pearson is right on the back of foster now you can see ryan jones getting past sorry you can see pearson get uh, jones getting past foster 
Now we're going to see Pearson getting past Martin. So Pearson in the DPR car is going to get underneath Martin there and get the lead of the race. Finally taking Jason Martin's uh, Jason Martin's P1 away from him, which he's held all race long. Absolutely. So uh, Martin there on the last lap, uh, half a second slower than Pearson, but of course on fresh tyres uh, or fresher tyres, Neil Pearson, pinned on lap 25, so 15 laps old. Martin still on the set he started the race with, so 40 laps old. That's the difference you can see there. Yeah, and that's the difference between nice fresh tyres and slightly warm tyres, but sort of on some tracks, you know, it's a, it's a two to three second advantage on those fresh tyres at the moment. Uh, it's around about half a second, which is still an, a huge amount of time to be gaining, uh, but it's not as big an advantage as we have seen in other places. So what Nick Neil Pearson needs now is a nice long green period where he can make a bit of a gap. He needs to make that gap up for if there is green flag pit stops. Uh, take advantage of that if they come in. He'll need to probably stop sort of a couple of laps, uh, just a couple of laps after Jason Martin, because Jason Martin will eat into that lead pretty quickly. Are on those fresh tyres as well so it's it's going to be a strategy game now if we go green this is going to be a fascinating race Ryan Jones and Hamish Gallagher chasing down Jason Martin now as well to move up in the second and third the other two of our early stoppers from the lead group Lachlan Urquio he uh, is on fresher tyres but lap 14 so uh, those uh, the advantage there for him has worn away he has just made his way past Josh Micklemore um, but so uh, you can see here, Ryan Jones, they're just getting really close to the wall on the outside. That's cost him a little bit of time, but he is uh, very much closing in on the back of Jason Martin as well. So maybe too long before Jones and Gallagher assume second and third place, you would think. And uh, Jason Martin will have to manage a little bit down in fourth, but uh, he will not despair with uh, fresh boots on the cards. Yeah, that's it Jason knows there's a long way to go in this race at the moment we've not even got to lap 50 yet of 150 so there is an awful long way to go still um, but uh, that's it there's a, it, it's sort of just knowing that you, the race hasn't gotten away from you yet there's still things that are going to happen there are still plenty of things to happen in motorsport and uh, you know the, the only thing that is certain is uncertainty in motor racing um, but Lachlan Lopio are doing a great job at the moment. He's managed to make 12 positions in the race. He's one of the biggest gainers so far. So doing a really good job of working his way up the field at the moment. He's on those slightly fresher tyres, but he is taking advantage of that and uh, making it some good moves. But he has got Micklemore and uh, Hedeshi coming back at him now. So looks like the uh, tyres are just starting to fall off a little bit for Lockie and he's starting to struggle a little bit. You can see right now, Gallagher and Jones having a bit of a battle. Gallagher on that inside in the 13. Ryan Jones on the outside in the triple one, holding that position at the moment, but it sort of looks like a matter of uh, time before the uh, before the 13 gets passed at the moment. Jones is doing a good job of holding that high line, but it does look like Gallagher's got a little bit more pace, maybe. Yeah, maybe just not having to push quite so hard to get back up there as well, so he, um, he's going to use that to his advantage. Ooh, Ryan Jones losing the rear end there. Just got a big snap of oversteer on the exit of the corner. That's going to light those rear tyres up a little bit. That's going to boil them a little bit as well. Just add a little bit of extra heat, and that's what you don't want to do at the moment. You just want to keep those tyres. Uh, you want to treat them like a like a baby almost, just very, very carefully, very gently, not too much stress in them, because the more stress you put through them, the more they're going to fall off. Yeah, absolutely, but you can see as well, they're not quite managing to close that gap to uh, Martin in front of them. And uh, Neil Pearson has set off at the front, he's two and a half seconds up on this battle here. So uh, Gallagher won't be holding up too much behind uh, Ryan Jones. So he looks like he's uh, going to try and get it done here. Jones will get a better run off the outside. Be a drag race. And uh, Gallagher will close this out, you'd figure going into turn two to get that one in there and indeed through turn two he's just going to slide it up there and get that job done nice little pass by Hamish Gallagher there uh, managed to make that move at stick and hold into position um, Foster's doing a good job of managing the pace between himself Dyson and Worley at the moment so Worley's just a little bit a little bit down there so Foster's a little bit in no man's land the pace is sort of plateauing a little bit Pearson is still the fastest by about a tenth of the second but not 
a huge difference in pace at the front. You know, it's, it's a tenth of a second, and that's all. Meanwhile, the teammates are making a move on each other a little bit further down as Philip Wally does make a move on Andrew Dyson. Uh, gets past, we can see Mirko Dortnak and uh, I think that might be Paul Jackson there, yeah. Uh, just having a fight side by side with Dave Douglas in front of them. Paul Jackson's car has seen some better days. Uh, it's got a very unique front uh, front bodywork design to it, but it's uh, still tugging along out there. He's still on the lead lap, importantly, and still racing. Dave Douglas just easing off a little bit. He's just not pushing too hard at the moment, so it looks like Dave is just in cruise mode at the moment. So we'll see what happens to him later in the race, see if he's just struggling a little bit maybe, or if he's going to come back. Meanwhile, there's a big battle going on for JCW at the moment. He's got a lot of cars behind him. He's a bit of a cork in the bottle. Ruben Phelps is going to try and make the move on the inside of him now in the 06, getting down on the 35, and his teammate of uh, Aiden Schultz is also going to want to try and make that move relatively soon. Because uh, it does look a little bit like maybe Joshua Carroll is just a little bit slower than that group of cars. Because uh, you can see how bunched up they are with each other. It's Riley Curtis just got up into the wall there, which has allowed Luke Traher to uh, make a push on him. So Traher here looks like he's going to make up another position, get back up into P16. Oh, as he just gets the touch on there, Traher just pulls down onto the inside of the track just to make sure. Just uh, very, very narrowly narrowly avoiding uh, an incident there with the 93 of Riley Curtis. Yeah, good save there for Chahe. He's just going to have to resettle in, just get back into the rhythm now in the way down uh, machine there. A little bit further up in front, Gallagher has got past Martin. I think Martin didn't make too much of an effort to, to battle his teammate, and that's given Hamish Gallagher the chance to get past and start trying to close the gap a little bit on Neil Pearson, who's got a good three second lead over Jason Martin at the moment two and a half seconds over Hamish Gallagher so Martin has got a good one Daniel Hedersheed and Josh Micklemore meanwhile are side by side coming out of the final corner Micklemore's got a nose in front at the moment Hedersheed is on the bottom line will he be able to stick it round there and get past Josh Micklemore he's going to keep it on that low line at the moment he's just easing that throttle on there gently gently does it he's going to try and slide up in front of Micklemore there and block him off nice move there from Hedersheed who now has to try and catch up to Lachlan Oakio. Meanwhile, we've got Danny G making a move on Riley Curtis. Will he be able to get that one done? He's going to go down the inside there. All a little bit of contact, I think, for Riley Curtis and jo Joshua Carroll Walden. Looks like Curtis got boxed up a little bit behind JCW there. Yeah, it did indeed. Look like that was the case. I was just keeping an eye on that, uh, that battle there as well. While we're going through... Having a look, because it does look like JCW is just struggling a little bit here. And these guys behind him trying to make their way through. So, can Danny G get the job done here? Make a move up one position. Certainly looks like he's got the pace. Same with Riley Curtis. Justin Witcher behind. Down on the inside there with Scott Griffiths, Luke Traher. So, this pack continues to grow and battle. There's uh, Lachlan Urquio still battling away at the front here, trying to make a move with uh, those slightly fresher tyres, but Daniel Hedersheed just gets the job done underneath him at the moment. So there's a little train here with Hedersheed, Urquio and Micklemore in this battle for eighth position. Yeah, I think uh, Urquio has just boiled off his tyres a little bit. He's just used a little bit too much life in those slightly fresher tyres to get past people, and he's now starting to suffer a little bit. A little bit, uh, what I was talking about with uh, the guys up front as well is that they were pushing incredibly hard, incredibly early with those first few laps. And then when you get to a certain stage, all of a sudden things start to struggle. And I think that's what's happened to Loch Lachlan Urquio right now. He's starting to struggle a little bit with those, even though they're fresher tyres, he's starting to drop off the pace a little bit, just unable to keep the car a little bit lower, struggling a little bit with understeer. Uh, and that car is just, just not quite handling how he wants it to handle. Uh, meanwhile, it's come back to Jason Martin a little bit. He's setting times very similar to the cars around him, despite being on tyres that are much, much older. Uh, so it looks like the plateau has started to happen. So we're going to see these guys start to sort of set some similar paces, despite being on very different tyre stints. As I say, Andrew Dyson running at the same pace as those up the front at the moment. So he's doing the same lap times as uh, Jason Martin and the like so yeah we'll just sit here in this Ooh, little, little holding pattern we've got a caution out i think it might be for night uh, oh uh for justin which i think I'm just going back to yeah it was indeed there just came up on screen so just had a slide there which up 
a little bit of contact with the wall as well and that has brought out the caution so uh, I reckon we'll see uh, the balance of the field jump in through pit lane here during this uh, caution period this is exactly what people like Pearson and uh, Pearson Gallagher and Jones did probably didn't want to see in all honesty this is going to hurt them a little bit more in the race uh, because they have got they've used up one more set of tyres so I think we're going to see majority of the field looking at coming into pit lane at this time round we may see a few adventurous people maybe staying out but I'm um, feeling like we're going to see a lot of cars coming in yeah, we figure lap 60, so 62 by the time we're done here. This, uh, Martin definitely makes the indication that he's going to jump into pit lane. I don't think this is too much of gamesmanship. Probably is from uh, Hamish Gallagher. No, even Gallagher's come in now. So Pearson, Gallagher, the whole field on it their way in. This is interesting. So they're going to roll yeah. the dice on uh, using up that last set of tyres, Pearson, Gallagher and Jones, to um, make sure they don't lose track position. So this will... Uh, only play out poorly for them if there is another caution period. Yeah, it's going to start getting a little bit dicey now for those guys. They're going to have to be a little bit more cautious towards the end of the race. and It, it means they don't have as much strategy to play with. Um, so they they all have... Um, they all have two... Those guys that have pitted... Um, like Pearson... Uh, all those guys that pitted last time around will have another, one more set of tyres left. Whereas the guys that stayed out will have two sets of tyres left. So with 90 laps remaining, that's uh, that's pretty dangerous stuff. We've only done 60 laps, remember? So if we get two more cautions now, uh, it's sort of... If we get another caution in 30 laps and then another caution towards the end of the race with, say, 20 or 30 odd laps to go, that gives the people that have that extra set of tyres a huge advantage. Yeah, I was just about to say, um, it, it's really going to come down to when the cautions fall, isn't it? Yeah, that's going to be a big thing now. So if those cautions fall in the right way for people, they could be in for a shout. So not uh, they're still within a shout as well, because those guys that stayed out on those old tyres didn't lose too many positions. You've got Jason Martin in fourth. You've got Dyson and Foster as well. Those guys all stayed out on those old tyres. So... Uh, you've got uh, Philip Worley and Daniel Hedersheed as well, all on the slightly older tyres. Josh, Josh Micklemore, he's only just got the one set of tyres used up. So those guys are sitting pretty at the moment and the rest will start getting a little bit sweaty and a little bit panicky thinking, oh, this could be a bad thing. Yeah, well, we'll see uh, how it plays out for them. It's not going to be an easy run to the uh, the finish here if there are late cautions. That's when it will get most uncomfortable for them. As they uh, will, uh, we saw there the uh, the big pace difference when Pearson and uh, Gallagher, Ryan Jones, made their way through from the rear of the field, or almost the rear of the field, after that uh, that first pit stop. So, who knows um, if we uh, if we do get a late caution, these guys will. Uh, drop down, they'll stay out of course, if we get uh, a second caution they'll drop a fair way down the field to uh, the, uh, those that pit but they'll be able to make that gap up really quickly so uh, it could be in for a really interesting finish here could be indeed, and just, just going back and have a little bit of a look at that one with Witcher and it was Witcher and Traher involved in that one Traher just getting, uh, just having a little bit of contact with Witcher and that's what got Witcher around in the end, so uh, so little bit of contact there just causing that caution flag to come out and uh this is what happens when you're racing so close to each other is it just takes a momentary lapse of con concentration and then all of a sudden that flag will fly but the pace car is going to come in this is going to be N neil pearson leading away when's he going to drop the loud pedal he's waiting he's waiting he's waiting he drops it now gets a good start for pearson gets away nicely you can see the mitch motorsport boys on the outside working together well they've got ryan jones on the inside at the moment they're going to want to try and get past him really nice start for andrew dyson as well he's got that low line at the moment he's going to try and take it right down at the inside there there are a couple of cars that are running three wide at the moment as they come down the back straight you can see there dyson is trying to get that move done on jason martin at the moment can't quite make it stick at this stage but he's side by side with foster you've got ryan jones there as well on the inside he's going to try and make the move on Gallagher, will he be able to get it done? Can't quite get it done this time around. Gallagher going in to defend. 
Still two wide, a little bit further back between Dyson and Foster and Wally and Hedersheed. Jason Martin getting a good start as well. Remember, all of these drivers on absolutely the freshest of rubber. So they're all racing for position. Oh, no, it's Martin there. Gets a tap. He gets a tap. I think that might have been from Andrew Dyson, and that has taken Edward Foster out of the race as well. Yeah, that is a big one there. That is, that's two favourites there for the race. Getting taken out, getting nailed by Andrew Dyson there. Um, that one is a real... Yeah, that, that one was a big one, and I, I think Dyson is going to throw his arm, hands up and say, look, sorry about that one. I thought you were going to break a little bit later. I think Jason just caught Dyson out a little bit, breaking a little bit early, but that is a huge crash, and Foster is just the innocent passenger. Yeah, sometimes it's just not your lucky day, and uh, Edward Foster there just in the wrong spot. We'll just go back and have another quick look at that. In slow-mo there, you can see... Uh, Foster just had nowhere to go whatsoever. And uh, Jason Martin, a lot of damage on the front of that 21. He's uh, going to probably struggle for the rest of the night, you would think. But uh, the 53, that may be terminal. Yeah, it might be race over because it looks like there's a lot of damage to the engine section of that car. He's going to bring it in and see what that can be, can be done. A great job from the rest of the field, though, because that was so high up with that one. There was a lot of cars coming past it in that instant, and the fact we didn't have a secondary crash is uh, really good driving by everybody else. Um, Aiden Schultz having to lock up his uh, lock up his insides, both effectively his right, his left side wheels, just to get hit that car, avoiding the accident. Um, Riley Curtis doing a good job not to hit Aiden Schultz there, and pretty much everybody just avoiding that accident perfectly. So good driving from the rest of the field to avoid that crash, because that could have been a really nasty one. Yeah, definitely could have taken out a lot of drivers. So uh, not so, which is good. Neil Pearson, Hamish Gallagher will uh, be back at the front of this one when it restarts. Jones and Dyson on the second row. So we've got uh, Mitch Motorsport, DPR and uh, Ryan Jones uh, who are going to be at the front of this field. And uh, we'll see how they fare. Daniel Hedersheet up into uh, sixth position as well. Biggest move of the night so far. Good old sneaky Steve Williams. He's just done what he usually does, which is keep things nice and quiet and moved himself up inside the top ten. So good driving from him so far. And uh, he will no doubt be looking to try and convert that into uh, something a little bit further north as the rest of the evening goes on. Yeah, always solid Stevie Dub working his way up the field. Always good through traffic as well. And that's one of the big things of Steve, Steve Williams is... He can work his way through the traffic, and uh, that, that's one of those skills that's very hard to master, and he seems to do it on a weekly basis and manage to keep that going. Um, so really nice job from him there. That's going to help him out an enormous amount. Uh, just looking through the field, and Foster is back out on track with a very, very, uh, very, very broken car, but uh, he's, he's going to have the the extreme cooling system on that one. You get a beautiful view of the cup engine and the suspension system on that one. Um, Jason Martin, meanwhile, I think he might be out for the night, unfortunately, in pit lane. I think he might be done. Yeah, it looks like he has jumped out of the car there, so that's disappointing. Paul Martin was a uh, unfortunate event for him. One of the skilled drivers as well, so you know it was an absolute accident in uh, Andrew Dyson there, so uh, disappointed, but that is racing, and it can happen. Yes, racing can be cruel sometimes. It's, uh, you know, you, you either have good luck or bad luck. Um, it's one of the, uh, it, it's the, the far extremes of it, so sometimes your luck will shine through and you'll miraculously get through an instant, but other times it won't be so good and, uh, yeah, you get caught up in it and there's nothing you can do about it, unfortunately. Even the best drivers in the world that have ever existed have had those moments where they just get caught up in somebody else's accident or just has a little bit of a mistake and an accident happens. Pace car's going to come in again. Pearson is going to lead away. When's he going to drop the loud pedal? He's going to drop it again very early. Gets a good jump on the rest of the pack. Hamish Gallagher, good reaction time. You can see just behind him, Ryan Jones, he didn't quite get away. He didn't get away quite as quickly. He's just got his nose in front of Gallagher for a moment there, but Gallagher's able to slide down in front of him there. Nice move from Hamish Gallagher there to get up into P2. Keep that position saved from Ryan Jones. 
and now Gallagher is going to be trying to put the pressure on Pearson up at the front. Absolutely, you've got Dyson on the outside there, Daniel Hedersheet coming through. He's got Philip Worley behind him, who's looking racy. There's uh, up the front, Hamish Gallagher now putting the screws on Neil Pearson to see if he can get a move up into P1. Not quite got there yet. It's going to be a drag race down the back straight. You pull in front of Andrew Dyson, the DPR boys at the front looking to try and make something happen together here. But Hamish Gallagher has other plans. There's uh, Daniel Hedishi there trying to get down underneath Ryan Jones just on the back of the screen there. You can see that there as well. But uh, at the moment, Hamish Gallagher just looking for a way past Neil Pearson at the front here. Just dropped a little bit off. Not too far though, so he won't be able to get a run on here. As Hedishi moves up to that top line to defend from Philip Worley who's trying to get past him. And uh, Ryan Jones is uh, in that mix as well as they've moved up onto the back of Andrew Dyson. So we've got a pack developing now. These lead two of Pearson and Gallagher are starting to split away from the rest of the pack. Yeah, they're building up a nice little bit of a gap, a little bit of a buffer between the rest of the cars. And that's what they're going to want to do, try and get that buffer worked out as best they can. They've got some good battles going on throughout the pack at the moment. Just, just trying to keep an eye on everything at the moment. It's the front at the moment that is pretty racy few cars trying to work their way up uh, but have got knocked down because of damage and because of incidents unfortunately and they're just going to try and work their way up a little bit quieter a little bit less uh, less dramatically i'd say um, but expect to see them come up towards the end of the stints so we'll keep an eye a little bit further down the pack but up the front at the moment is where the majority of the action is happening Dyson's trying to keep a hard charging Ryan Jones behind him. Hedersheed doing a great job in the 0535 at the moment in fifth position for debut with Natari. Uh, doing a good job up there at the moment. And you can see at the moment Ryan Jones is really putting the pressure on Andrew Dyson. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, tyre's pretty fresh still. Even uh, after that uh, caution, no one dived in, of course, because it's too recent. Too close to get that uh, last set of tyres on, particularly for those who've already two stopped. So we do have a number of those up the front. Gallagher and Pearson as Gallagher just makes a move down underneath Neil Pearson now for the lead of the race. But uh, Gallagher, Pearson and Ryan Jones inside our top five have used up three of the four allocated sets of tyres here. So they're hoping this one goes green for a long, long time. Lachlan Urquio and uh, Stephen Williams on that same strategy along with Danny G is down there. You can see Ryan Jones just getting the move done down under Andrew Dyson now. Daniel Hedishi looking to go with him. He's not going to quite get up there far enough, but it looks like Jonesy will probably get the job done here on Dyson. If he can get a better drive out of the corner, which it looks like he's going to do. It'll even up a little bit on the outside there as they drag race down towards turn one. Better exit as you'd expect for Dyson on the high line. Jonesy will send it in deep again as he does. Gets real wide Dyson there. So Jonesy's going to cut him off. Does that little bit of a nibble on the right hand rear quarter there. That is good racing from those two. As Daniel Hedersheet tries to find his way to be the cheese in that sandwich. He's not able to do it. So now it is Andrew Dyson who's down underneath on that inside line. Jones will get a bit of drive out of the corner here. And he does just that and starts to open up a little bit of a gap over Andrew Dyson. Good driving from those two gentlemen. That's a change there for position number three. Bit of dirt racing style for Ryan Jones there. He did a bit of a slide job on Andrew Dyson. Just slid the car through that corner. It's not going to do wonders for your tyre life, but is a fantastic to watch. Really nice move by Jones and that put Dyson off a little bit. It gave Hedersheed the opportunity to try and make a move. He thought about going three wide into the corner thought better of it at this stage of the race uh, it's a little bit dangerous this early on you can see again ryan jones just getting a huge tank slapper out the corner those rears are getting a little bit angry with him um but those that little bit of sliding he's done it's hurting his tires a little bit he's probably got a little bit more heat in those tires than he wants to have at the moment and that's costing him speed that's giving neil pearson a little bit of breathing room at the moment and it's given andrew dyson the chance to fight back on ryan jones and while this is happening it's closing up the gap behind him from uh, Hedersheed, Wally, Micklemore and Urquio and Stephen, Stephen Williams as well will start closing up on this group as well. Meanwhile, Hamish Gallagher's checked out a little bit. Hamish Gallagher doing an absolute great job with that dive job. 
uh, dive bomb on Neil Pearson earlier on in the stint. I think Pearson was caught a little bit napping there. Didn't expect Gallagher to actually break that deep. And uh, in all honesty, neither did I. So really nice move from Hamish Gallagher. Caught everybody unaware and uh, basically just forced his way through. It was through a bit of that last night as well with um, the uh, Micklemore and Gallagher battle at the front of the pack. Josh Micklemore, it, I don't know if it's just a uh, an illusion based on looking at uh, at the racing, but it seems to be able to send that uh, 31 entry a lot deeper into the corner and, and still just pull it up and have it not too much affect his tyre wear. So Gallagher's uh, picked up on some of that, you would assume, uh, as well last night with uh, their running in the Xfinity series, and it's paying dividends for them tonight. Yeah, some of that can be down to little things like how you have your tyre, sorry, how you have your brake pressure set, things like that. So, uh, of course, you know, there's, there's there's certain settings you can do in iRacing, but there's also settings on your rig as well. And, you know, if you have your rig set up absolutely perfectly with its brake brake balance and uh, its brake pressure and things like that, that can really help you with the old braking into corners and things like that and I think at the moment it looks like Mitch Motorsport have got that setting absolutely nailed uh, they seem to be really good under the brakes at the moment as you see Danny G trying to make a bit of a move on Josh your Carol Walden at the moment a little bit further down the field and uh, Danny G having another good run um, up there he's really putting the pressure on JCW at the moment a sea of orange cars behind JCW at the moment the two crank eSport cars of Aiden Schultz and Ruben Phelps as well yeah, Riley Curtis also involved in this battle here. Take a step a little bit further back as well. And you've got Luke Traher and Scott Griffith. You would see before, just at the top of the screen, Scott Griffith got a little bit loose uh, a lap or so ago. Nearly knocked into the wall as well with the uh, right-hand recorder. So he's uh, trying to recover now. See if he can make his way past Luke Traher. Edward Foster in the main whilst he's uh, trying to make... Uh, some moves back up the field after that earlier incident involving him. He's uh, back up into P20. We've been uh, basically last on track. So he's just trying to see if he can get past just Justin Witcher now and uh, move up another position as Phelps does get past Riley Curtis. Sorry, Riley Curtis does get past Phelps or tries to make the move up for position 13. Yeah, Foster had some really good short run pace actually with that damage, but he seems to be struggling a little bit now. I think the long run is starting to affect him because he's starting to drop back like a stone. Um, so Nigel Patton's going to get past Foster now as well. So I think Foster's got some short run capability in that car, but he doesn't have any long run pace, unfortunately. So that's going to hurt him for this race. So he's just going to have to trundle around a little bit. Uh, Jason Martin has managed to get back out as well. Uh, so he's running down in last at the moment. A fair few laps down, unfortunately, but... Obviously, a point scoring finish is important, and uh, you're going to want to try and do that. Meanwhile, Danny G is making a move on Aiden Schultz. Uh, sorry, on uh, Ruben Phelps. Sorry, they're side by side at the moment. If those two rub paint, you wouldn't notice it too much because they're both orange, a slightly different shade. So, Riley Curtis now thinking about making a move as well. So, he's right on this battle between Danny G, Ruben Phelps, and Riley Curtis at the moment. Great little scrap going on here. Danny G just getting a little bit of oversteer there, mid-corner, the back end steps out on him. That's going to lose him a little bit of straight line speed. Ruben's going to pull away a little bit. This could give Riley Curtis the opportunity to strike. Will he make the move? Not quite yet. And then just a little bit further back is Matty Ray, of course, uh, keeping that car nice and clean, just sitting back there, waiting to make his move in the SRM machine and uh, see what he can get out of this race as well. It also looks like Traher's closing up, so Scotty Griffith going with him. So this is all uh, developing a bit of a pack here. This battling between Phelps and Danny G is helping those behind close the margin. So the longer this goes on, the better it is for them and uh, the better it is for us, of course, as well. Really good battle in front of them as well between JCW and Aiden Schultz as they almost make contact there. A little bit of side draft just catching Schultz out. Uh, just got him a little bit wobbly there as those cars got very close to each other. And then the little air pocket between them just got them out. And then oh, a little bit of, just a little bit of rubbing there on the back of JCW and Aiden Schultz there. So those two battling it out very hard at the moment. That cost Schultz a little bit of time. So he's going to have to resettle down and go after JCW once more. See what he can do with this attack. But it looks like Schultz is able to get a little bit better long run pace. He's just able to run that lower line a little bit better than JCW at the moment. He's just struggling a tiny bit in that car. Um, 
even though it's quite clean looking. Jay, uh, Aiden Schultz has got a little bit of damage on it from an earlier incident, but Schultz has got the move done. So he's now going to try and chase down Stevie Dub. Will we see JCW try and make the move back here? He tries, but can't quite make it happen. Can't quite make it work. Good overtaking there from the front of the field. Yeah, absolutely good racing. Phelpsy there just, oh, just getting real close up to the front of JCW. That's actually going to help Danny G as he gets a run on the exit now. Joshua Carl Walden just getting held up a little bit there. As Phelps, he tried to get that one under control, and Danny G is going to get the job done here. You imagine on JCW, JCW get a better run down the straight, so it's going to be a drag race. There's that, oh, there's contact there, just a little bump. Nothing too untoward, just a bit of racing. They head down into turn two. It continues here. It looks like Danny G's got a better run now, and. Uh, JCW just pulling in the back there. Oh, there's a big tank slapper from Riley Curtis in behind them. And it's just to hold on to it. That is a change for position there. Danny G moving up into 12th. Meanwhile, up the front, Neil Pearson is putting all kinds of pressure on Hamish Gallagher at the moment. Pearson is all over Gallagher's mirrors, just trying to distract him a little bit. He's going left, he's going right, and he's keeping him right on the back of Gallagher and really turning the screws. He's trying to pressure him into a mistake. A little bit further back, Ryan Jones is getting passed by Andrew Dyson as well. Dyson's going to make that move stick. He's going to push Ryan Jones a little bit wide. This could give Hedersheed the chance to make a move on, on Jones. Can't quite get the car stuck on that low line. Loses a little bit of pace on the exit and has to settle in just behind Ryan Jones there. But watch out for Hedersheed. He looks like he's got some good pace at the moment. Yeah, and even Wally going with him as well. So his uh, battles continue. This is very reminiscent, Carl, of last night. Um, where we had uh, two or three really good battles between sort of half a dozen cars spread throughout the field. It was really, really good as uh, Philip Wally is trying to make some progress here against Daniel Hedersheed, not quite able to get that done. Hedersheed trying to get the job done on Jones up the front. We've got uh, no gap whatsoever between our uh, first and second place sitters at the moment with uh, Gallagher and Pearson fighting away. That battle has come together. And then we've got that huge train of cars, which... Uh, starts basically with uh, Aiden Schultz and Ruben Phelps sorry my apologies Ruben Phelps and uh, Danny G and uh, Joshua Carroll Walden and you can see there that uh, that pack starting to form yeah some really good little packs forming up at the moment I think Ryan Jones just made a slight mistake going into the corner and that's given uh, given Philip Wally the opportunity to make a little bit of a move on Hedersheed at the moment they fall back into line but Ryan Jones looks to be struggling a little bit with the rear of that car uh, meanwhile Josh Micklemore is uh, is having a good little fight between himself and Lachlan Oakrio as well so there are plenty of battles going on it's always a good problem to have when there's too many battles going on the track to keep a hold of absolutely so we've got 55 to go Will there be another caution period that will uh, change this one up? Will we go green to the end? Which is a uh, possibility. Look with the field spreading out a little bit now, so uh, only time will tell. If we, if we do get a caution, I reckon everyone will jump into pit lane. Depending on how late it is, of course. So uh, plenty of twists and turns still to come here on FGME Cast and Car Cup Thursday night. Favourite night of the week see these guys do what they do best to have an off week next week with the cup but uh enjoying tonight very much so oh oh we've got in contact between martin and neil neil pearson and jason martin there um we've got contact between those two so those guys getting into each other there so yeah, Jason Martin just sitting up high and it looks like Neil Pearson's car just ran a little bit loose there in mid-corner. He just caught Jason Martin, unfortunately. So those guys just getting caught into each other. That was a bit of contact and that's given Hamish Gallagher a good bit of breathing room out the front and it's closed this battle up right, right behind him. Neil Pearson now has got Andrew Dyson all over the back of him. So that battle is really going to heat up. So just explain what happened there. I saw that uh, Jason Martin exited pit lane. Um, did Pearson get loose and get into Martin, or...? Um, a little bit hard to tell, in all honesty, from what I could see from there, is Martin was holding up on the high line, and Neil Pearson was just underneath them, and it looked like maybe a little bit of the aero wash caught Pearson, 
and just got him a little bit loose mid corner and he went up into Jason Martin there. So it looks like it was just that little bit of aero wash that caught Pearson out and he just made a little bit of contact with Jason Martin, unfortunately. So a little bit of an accident between those two, but uh, yeah, a little bit hard to say. I have to go back and actually have a good look at that one to work out exactly what happened. Well, it's brought Andrew Dyson up onto the back of Pearson now. You can see he's got a run on there. Dyson, obviously a lot more aggressive under the uh, entry into the corner. There. You see him close right up on the back of Pearson. Um, and uh, that was what uh, I think caught him out with Jason Martin earlier on when they uh, when they made contact. So he's uh, just uh, a little bit quicker into the, into the corner than the drivers in front. Of course, there's no brake lights on these cars at all. They're just stickers. So... The, uh, he wouldn't have been able to see that there and just uh, perhaps a little bit of a, a misjudgment because uh, that's uh, very close there between Pearson, between himself and Andrew Dyson. Yeah, Hedersheed making a move on Ryan Jones right now. Hedersheed going down underneath Ryan Jones, keeping that car nice and solid and he's going to make the position up into P4 at the moment and he's going to want to try and close up on to the DPR boys uh, because at the moment it looks like Pearson's just struggling a little bit in his mid corner pace um, and as you said Dyson is just a lot lot later on his brakes and a little bit of that road racing sort of uh, experience coming in Neil Pearson no slouch on the roads as well we know Pearson is extremely quick on the road circuits so he is one of those drivers that's got that skill as oh Dyson loses the back end a little bit there catches the drift swings it around perfectly does not even look like he made a mistake there despite being the, despite being sideways. Uh, good driving there from Dyson, but this has closed up the gap for himself and Hedersheed. Hedersheed could be in with a chance here. Ryan Jones could be in with a little bit of a shout as well. So watch out for later in this stint. Those guys are looking pretty racy, but Hamish Gallagher has got almost a four and a half second lead at the front at the moment. So he is sitting out pretty, pretty, pretty at the moment. Absolutely, is uh, Justin Witcher. Looks like he's going to get a move on Matty Raymond. He's going to try and get this done. Raymond will get a drive here. It won't be this lap, but uh, maybe next lap around. And so you just see there, Mr. Sheen, the tyre's just a little bit loose. And uh, that's allowed a better run for Justin Witcher, who may be able to close it out now on Matty Ray. As uh, Lachlan Urquio jumps into pit lane. So he's uh, he did pit a lot earlier than the uh, last stop. So uh, he's decided it's a good time to get some new tyres. As uh, I think which is going to close the door here. No, not going to be quite able to get it done either. So this lap side to side will continue for uh, Matty Raymond and Justin Witcher. Good driving from these two. Running side by side for the last couple of laps in the battle for 15th uh, position. We've still got 46 laps remaining, Stuart. So still a long time to go. And I think... Uh, I've th got a feeling we might see Lachlan Okio coming in just thinking that this race might be running green for the rest of the time he's coming in now to slap some fresh tyres on there fill it up full of fuel go to the end of the race and try and get a few positions up uh, with the undercut here so I think he's he's planning a little bit of a, a move with that one you can see they're going to go almost free wide Lachlan Okio in front of Justin Witcher there Riley Curtis getting involved in this one as well with Manny Ray so that battle is still very much on. Um, and those guys are really getting close. Oh, Ryan Jones getting a huge tank slapper. He's going to drop down behind Wally, I think. Wally's going to have a good opportunity right now as they're just getting past Paul Jackson. Um, and Wally might just get hung up a little bit here. Paul Jackson on that high line. Nope, Ryan Jones coming into pit lane. So Ryan Jones has decided to pit now. So that is an important one to look at because Ryan Jones coming in now means that... Uh, nobody else is going to be trying to go to the end, I think. I think we're going to see people coming in in the next five to ten laps uh, for some fresh tyres and for fuel. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I've got a feeling we'll see some people coming in pit lane soon because Ryan Jones is going to gain a lot of time now on those fresh tyres. He's going to get a good undercut ability. So I think we're going to see a few pit stops happening in the near future. It also As means... indeed, Philip Wally comes in. Yeah, absolutely. It, it also means that uh, a number of these drivers have already stopped twice, uh, Jonesy being one of those. Uh, he's got no longer going to have any more tyres left at his disposal. So if we get a caution period at around 125, like 130, uh, he's probably going to start to struggle and uh, will lose a ton of places if there are others who jump in. 
yeah that's it it's uh this is the danger point we were talking about with that early strategy call as a few more drivers come in i think we've got andrew dyson neil pearson coming into pit lane at the moment so all of those front runners are starting to to loop it into pit lane now you'll have a few people just keeping it out there a little bit longer just in case there is a late caution just hoping that they might get the chance of a late caution here just to help them pit under the yellow flag um but it's going to be a strategy game now so who's going to get the strategy call right that's the big question yeah well only time will tell puts Daniel Hedersheed up into second position now six seconds behind Hamish Gallagher he's got six seconds to Josh Micklemore behind so uh, those boys there will uh, get fresh tyres but uh, it's all in the hands of this man at the moment Hamish Gallagher he uh, has a good solid lead now how long will he stick at it for? He's uh, coming in now. Answered our question straight away as he jumps into pit lane. So you reckon Daniel Hedersheed here will probably go around one more time and uh, get uh, the bonus point for leading a lap? And that he does. So he also had a little bit of problem because he had the DPR cards on his inside. So he really didn't have a choice that he couldn't really get down to the inside line to pit. So... He'll be hoping he has plenty of fuel left and things like that just to get around. And I'm pretty sure he'll be okay. Because uh, it looks like he's going to try and stick it out a couple more laps. You might see somebody like Aiden Schultz possibly stick it out for one more lap. Um, Hedersheed just getting it around one more time. So there are a few cars behind as well that haven't come in just as yet. So they're just sticking it out a little bit longer. They're just going to hope for that. Um, they're just going to hope for that possible possible uh, caution to come out well they might get their way but uh, head shed here will he duck down into pit lane no he's going to go around again so we've got to have a look at the lap time differentials Andrew Dyson 29.87 Last lap around Daniel Hedersheed, 31.56. So he will not want to uh, leave it too long to jump into pit lane at all because he's going to start hemorrhaging time and uh, will end up coming out behind those uh, who've already pitted. Danny G making a good move on his teammate just there. So there is a little bit of battle going on on the track still. Danny G looking like he's just saved his car a little bit later in this race. He's got a little bit more pace than those cars around him at the moment. Just getting underneath Josh Micklemore at the moment and just putting a little bit of pressure on Aiden Schultz there, who's currently sitting in second place in this race. Uh, Hedersheed is still going round. It sounds like he's doing a little bit of fuel saving, possibly. So he's going to try and get it around a little bit longer. Uh, will we see anybody uh, manage to take it quite a lot longer? That's the big question, um, of course, because uh, if, if you can take it to the end here, you might want to look at doing that. So... Uh, without knowing the exact fuel numbers these guys have got. That's always one of those questions, but being that so many cars have come into pit lane, I'd say fuel is probably getting towards the uh, the worrisome stages for these guys. So we'll probably see them come into pit lane before the end of the race, but uh, we've been proven wrong in the past. As Phelps gets a move done there on Josh Micklemore, so he now moves up into P4. Got a uh, number of cars still to pit, but uh, Danny G, of course, has stopped twice. So uh, he only has one set left. He'll be hoping for this one to run green for a lot longer yet. There's a chance, there is a chance that uh, these guys could run to the end. We've seen stranger things. Um, I, I've got a feeling we won't, but uh, as I said, it's one of those things without without getting a chance to chat to the guys beforehand we, we don't always know exactly what the fuel numbers are and uh, we've only got 35 laps remaining of course so it is getting towards the pointy end of the race and i think most of those people are coming in just because of uh, just covering off with tire stops more than anything um so I, I don't think it was more fuel related i think it was more tire related so um so yeah it's it's going to be interesting to see how this goes we're not gonna to have to wait too long to find out scott griffiths in pit lane as, as we well. got a caution this is exactly what oh, those guys would have wanted the caution is out 
And what? it is Philip Wally. Oh, as somebody just got clattered as Tristan Koch was moving along. I think it was Lachlan Arquio. Um So Philip Wally and Tristan Koch have got into each other. So I think I think it was a little bit of contact from Wally into Koch there. Unfortunately. Um, and then Koch just caught Lachlan Urquio, unfortunately. So you just see at the top of the screen there, Tristan Koch going around. Wally had nowhere to go, so he gives him a little bump on the way through. And... Yep, and unfortunately Tristan just just, just was actually getting the car. Ah, yeah, He's just Just blinded. getting the car out, and that caught caught Lockie. So, yeah, just just not holding the brake long enough there for Tristan. Unfortunately, just caught Lockie in the front. So that is devastating for Lockie because he was having a good run up there. Yeah, and of course, Circuio had already rolled the dice on his final pit stop. So, uh, yeah, he'll be uh, disappointed with that. He's jumped into pit lane now to get some repairs done, no doubt. Yeah, he'll need to get a little bit of a repair done. The guys that this is going to help are those guys that stayed out longer and those guys that uh, that have those extra sets of tyres, of course. Hedersheed, Danny G, Aidan Schultz, Josh Micklemore, Ruben Phelps and JCW Joshua Carroll Walden. Those guys are all sitting pretty at the moment. Um, you've got Hamish Gallagher technically in the lead of the race with Ryan Jones second and Neil Pearson in third. And they're on lap tyres that have done around about 10 laps. So they're going to they're gonna have to really... Uh, really hustle a bit on this restart yeah absolutely because everyone else behind them is on green tires nice fresh rubber and we uh, saw the difference it won't be as uh, dramatic between the uh, early pit stop takers and uh, those who've just stopped now but uh, there will still be a, uh, a lap time difference so uh, we've got to keep an eye on daniel hedersheed in the 035 natari autosport entry i think he's going to be quick um, but, of course, Neil Pearson, Ryan Jones, Hamish Gallagher can all steer their cup cars extremely well. So uh, they uh, will not be letting anyone through without a fight. Yeah, they are going to be holding on to those positions for dear life. And we did see that, you know, you can still have some good pace on slightly older tyres. Um, so with 10 laps, it's not going to be too bad. Uh, Ryan Jones, I think, is going to be the guy that's going to struggle the most, though. We'll just bring Lachlan Urquio up into the room. He's just been uh, down visiting Roseanne in the uh, infield care centre there. Lockie, uh, feeling a car after that one, mate. Terribly, terribly unlucky. Um, unsighted yeah. there, Tristan Cock. Just uh, oh. trying to get his race restarted and uh, you just got clipped. I, I, look, I saw the white car. I was on the brakes. like, Because I, I, I come around the corner on the brakes trying to see what was happening. And I saw Wally. I didn't see Tristan. Tristan just rolled forward a little bit, just enough to clip it. And I don't know if it's that new, they've got this new setup with some of the damage system or something, but it just completely tore the right front out of it and I couldn't turn the car. So I'm stuck in pits for 10 minutes getting it fixed. Yeah, it's very, very disappointing there, mate. And, and just completely unlucky. As you said, uh, Cock wouldn't be able to see you either. Probably would have assumed you would have been yeah. down on the low side and just uh, one of those things, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think Tristan was too pleased with the whole incident either. Apparently it was a bit... It, it seemed like a bit of malice, but I don't know. I didn't see it. I only got to the end of it. <laughs> well, we'll have to uh, have a look at that later on. We're about to go green flag again here. Got 30 laps to go. So uh, we'll uh, welcome you. Uh, if you want to, Lockie, you're more than welcome to stick around, mate. As we get going, Hamish Gallagher gets the drop on and gets running. He knows he's going to need to go pretty hard here because he's got a lot of fresh rubber behind him. Neil Pearson, Ryan Jones, the same as Daniel Hedersheet. Looks like he's going to try and take the run around the outside on Ryan Jones with three wide through turn one, four wide through turn one. His header sheet, oh, he gets bumped and he goes low and it looks like he's got into Danny G. Danny G's gone down onto the infield. Will this bring out another caution? Don't think that it will. So we're going to keep going here. Green flag running. It was very, very lucky. Very lucky not to get caution out there. The header sheet just caught the back of Ryan Jones there and then went down in to Danny G. Unfortunate for Danny G there. He was having a really strong race and uh, really working his way up there. That's going to hurt, hurt a lot for Danny G, unfortunately. Header sheet getting a little bit loose out the corner again. He's pushing as hard as he can at the moment. 
really going for it. It's all oh, big crash behind. We got uh, JCW and Aiden and Schultz. Aiden Schultz. Getting getting messy here. Cautions breeding cautions. So yeah, just getting caught there. Just into each other there, Schultz and JCW, unfortunately. And that is that. It looks like Aiden Schultz has just got caught into the side of by JCW. Those two were running very close and Schultz was running pretty high up towards the wall. So I think he was just a little bit anxious getting up any closer to that wall because, of course, you do get that buffering effect from the wall as well. And, uh, yeah, just caught JCW, and then it bounced him up into him, and then a big, big accident there. That is going to cost those two dearly. Yeah, there's going to be a couple of instances here to unpack uh, after this one, Carl, because they're yeah, not quite able to see there from just from the cameras uh, what happened just slightly before that uh, replay shows. So, um, yeah, disappointing there for them. Um, Schulte will be uh, disappointed as well, so... He'll uh, run back through pit lane. He's already back out on track, so he'll, he'll get this one finished. But, uh, yeah, not ideal for either of them. Right, that's going to hurt them quite a bit. And uh, the, the one it works out for, actually, is going to be Hedersheed right now because he's going to get to restart again a little bit further up. He's just going to be on that low line behind Hamish Gallagher. Uh, Neil Pearson will be up on the high line, so he's going to be able to get that traction down a little bit easier for Hedersheed. Same with Josh Micklemore as well. Uh, so they've managed to gain a position in this one. Um, it was a close call with that one between Schultz and JCW, unfortunately. Uh, it's it's definitely going to have to be looked at a little bit more in depth post race, I'd say, because yeah, a bit too close to call uh, from what I could see there. It just just looks like a little bit of a racing incident, in all honesty. One of those moments where drivers just getting close to each other just on the restart, and then all of a sudden, just the tiniest, tiniest little tap, and that is that. Yeah, and as you say, that air pocket and the wall, there's lots of things to consider there, but uh, surely uh, controllers will go back and have a look at that one. It, it also helps Gallagher and Pearson because uh, the longer we're under caution, of course, the less time they have to defend uh, those sort of 10-lap older tyres that they've got against uh, the hard charge of uh, Daniel Hedersheed behind them. So, uh, And, of course, Josh Micklemore doing a good job here. He's only stopped twice as well, so he's on fresh rubber. We know he's quick here. Um, he did get that little bit of early damage Um but, uh, you know, that's obviously not affecting him now. So don't be uh, too, uh, be a little bit worried, I should say, about uh, Josh Micklemore. There's every chance for him uh, to make a push to uh, to take this one out. Yeah, he's got a opportunity tonight. It's still anybody's race for sure. Edward Foster recovering relatively well, uh, as, as well as you can do with a car that looks like it's probably overheating a fair bit. He's in 15th position at the moment. Um, so he's going to be struggling to keep that position, I imagine, on the restart. But uh, it's still out there, still circulating, still getting points, most importantly. And that's going to be the main thing for him, is just getting those points. Yeah, of course, there is still a drop round uh, in this one, is there not? There is, yes. Yeah. So we still have the drop rounds to come into effect in the series. But it is pretty close. I mean, there's lots of... Lots of drivers in contention, people inside that top 10. Uh, you've got people like Luke Traher banging on the door. He's there in, I think, 10th position at the moment in the championship, uh, the standard championship, so to say, with the Way Down sponsored machine, of course, the Way Down podcast. Um, and he is knocking on that door. And then you've got people like Andrew Dyson and stuff like that who didn't think they had a chance of getting into the chase, who are definitely in with a shout. So. You know, it is not over. And with the chase format, it does shake things up a lot. So pace car is going to come in this time round. We're going to have 24 laps remaining here at New Hampshire for the Ansgar Cup Series on FGME cast. And Hamish Gallagher, when will he go? He's held it. No, he's gone straight away again. So Hamish Gallagher goes straight away here. Neil Pearson gets caught a little bit jogging on the spot, but he's moved down onto that low line, which is uh, going to help him. Daniel Hedersheet getting up. He's three wide there into turn one. Between Hedersheed, Micklemore, and Pearson. Good clean running from those three. Hedersheed down on the low line. Pearson is the cheese in that sandwich. And he's going to... Oh, as Micklemore gets really wide there. He's into the wall. He's into the wall there on the outside of turn three. 
Turn four indeed, and uh, that uh, has cost him. So Hedersheet up into second place, battling with Neil Pearson now, as we're too wide again down into turn one. Pearson getting a big, big tank slap for his rears, just gave up a little bit on him. They're side by side, very close between Pearson and Hedersheet. Uh, oh, Ryan, Ryan Jones, Jones going around. Ryan Jones going around in the background. That's going to bring the caution out. Yeah, it is indeed, and uh, Hedersheet will be thankful because he's going to retain second place after that one. Um, and uh, so he's going to get a front row view of it all, I believe. Oh, actually, it looks like Neil Pearson's moving back up in front of him there. So last full lap around. But uh, good close racing at the start there from uh, Micklemore, Hedersheet and Pearson. Micklemore just uh, getting up into the wall a little bit, which uh, which cost him. And uh, allowed for Hedersheet and Pearson to make their way through. So, uh, of course, Hamish Gallagher checked out at the start. Yeah, this is just going to mean Hamish Gallagher's got to do it one more time there. We saw some great battling between Hedersheed and uh, Pearson and Micklemore, and that was getting pretty pretty tasty. Yeah, absolutely. you got to love it when they're uh, getting together that close, as in, sorry, racing together that close without getting together. Um, it's uh, really, really good for us to be able to watch. There was uh, plenty of that last night, and uh, we're seeing getting here tonight. Yeah, seeing plenty of action there tonight, and uh, yeah, it's just going to be, oh, it's going to be some interesting stuff post-race. I think a few few drivers getting a little bit heated out there as well, so watch out for that one as it goes on. Um, so yeah, there's going to be, I reckon there's going to be a few, few chats post-race. Just means we need to keep the uh, post-race interviews short, Carl, so that we can jump up and have a listen. <laughs> <laughs> We might, might see a few private rooms forming up tonight, I think. Yeah, we, 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 need to, we need to speak to uh, the admin and, and get an access all areas pass so we uh, can jump in and just have a little listen so get the inside goss on what goes on here in the uh, Ants Car series. But uh, no, it's all, uh, it's all in the right stead. There's, uh, there's no uh, rubbish going on. It'll just be talking about the racing and... Uh, It'll, uh, it'll get sorted out, that's for sure. But uh, as we said earlier, drivers have very, very long memories, so there might be uh, a little bit of payback in another race or two. You just never know. So you, you often see it there where a driver just, just, just might have a little bit of understeer somewhere where you normally don't get understeer and, uh, and, and a little <laughs> bit of rubbing where there isn't normally rubbing. You know, the, these are the kinds of things that you get in stock car racing, and that's the beauty of stock car racing is you know it's it's not all it's not a real obvious uh just take off of somebody but you do get a little bit of payback here and there and uh i've been on the receiving end of it a few times and i must admit i, I may have uh may have been the instigator of it a couple of times in the past as well in a certain series but uh these things do happen uh you admit nothing <laughs> I, as I said, may have been. I'm not saying I, I did. I just, just there, there, there may, there may be some allegations. That's it. Yes, nothing that holds up in the court of law. But Hamish Gallagher is going to have to lead it away again with Neil Pearson behind him. What this does do is it helps them two out because they're going to lock out those front two spots. There's going to be two fast charging cars behind him on slightly fresher tyres. Well, I say two. There are many fast cars on fresher tyres everybody behind them has got those fresher tires so it's going to be a tricky one the longer that there are cautions the more it's going to help out gallagher and pearson of course um but we might see if we get a, another caution will we see all the drivers coming in chuck some fresh boots on the cars that still have some left we might see that still possibly there's only 18 laps remaining though so it would be a big gamble but somebody might take that risk somebody might decide well i'm going to try it out see how this goes i think philip Worley is one of those drivers that has decided on that uh, he's down in 16th position so he has decided to take on an extra set of boots later in this stint so watch out this one yeah, we did see Neil Pearson make a really good quick charge up the field as well. So, you know, I reckon probably 15 laps is probably uh, about it, unless we uh, get a, uh, you know, a caution at 10. That'll be interesting. But Hamish Gallagher jumps straight away, and off he goes into the lead to try and close this one out. Let's hope we stay green for some good 
close racing at the finish here as once again Josh Micklemore and Daniel Hedersheed start battling at it in positions three and four. That's helped out Neil Pearson in front of them, but uh, they're going to get back on him again. He's uh, going to have to do some hard work here, Pearson, in the end of this race. You can see there Ruben Phelps trying to go around the outside of Andrew Dyson as well. So the battle is thick at the front here, but uh, it is always uh, Hedersheed just gets a little loose on the exit there. But uh, it is uh, Hamish Gallagher out in front. Yeah, Hamish Gallagher getting a great run away there. He was quicker than a wicket with dynamite off its butt. Uh, very, very quick off the line for Gallagher. And that's given him a nice little bit of breathing room to Neil Pearson, who's going to be a little bit of a blocker. Oh, as there's huge another one. The Philip Wally. Philip Wally got around. We don't have a caution, though. That's the most important thing. No caution flag. So that is some good news for a few drivers. Um, so I'm just going back a little bit of a look at that as uh, you can see there, Hadashid is getting up there. So it looks like Witcher just got it into, into Wally, unfortunately, and that's hurt him out. But Hadashid is down underneath Neil Pearson at the moment. There's a little bit of a touch there between Pearson and Hadashid. And Hadashid is going to make that move. You can see Pearson just going up, just touching the wall slightly. Those guys catching up, and there's another spin in the background. Somebody else has got around. But yeah, there's Mirko Delton down in the background there. Still green flag racing, thankfully, so it's remaining green. This is good news for Hedersheed. He is charging up on Hamish Gallagher now. He's going to have some pace on Hamish. They've got 14 laps remaining, so we are getting towards that point. A little bit further back, you've got uh, Luke Traher and JCW, Joshua Carroll Walden, fighting it out. Um, they are battling position. Looks like Luke Traher is able to get underneath JCW at the moment. Ruben Phelps is on the move as well, getting past Andrew Dyson. Those two keeping the battle going side by side at the moment. Just keeping an eye on where the battles are happening at the moment. Luke Traher and JCW are pretty spicy, uh, as well as Phelps and Dyson. Yeah, and of course, uh, Stevie Williams trying to go with Luke Traher here down underneath. Makes it three wide, if you don't mind. And uh, there's a huge gaggle of cars coming up on the back there. Dave Douglas as well getting into the action. You mentioned him earlier on about just managing his race. Oh, as he gets real loose there down underneath. Sorry, Dave, I didn't mean it, mate. I just wanted to mention your name, but I don't do it again. Through here, there gets passed by Stephen Williams. So it uh, is thick here with 14 to go between Williams, Traher, Josh Carroll, Walden, Robbie Curtis getting involved in that one at the front. Daniel Hedersheed and Hamish Gallagher have checked out, but they're close together. We'll have a look here. Yeah, at, the moment, at the moment, Hedersheed is flying. He is so much quicker than Gallagher. He's really catching up, staying on the back of Gallagher. And you've got to say, this is going to be a uh, when rather than if moment. Those guys are looking extremely racy at the moment. A um, few more passes for position at the moment. Danny G's trying to work his way back up through the field from that earlier incident. He's currently just getting up past Foster, trying to make that move, but can't quite make it stick at the moment. Gallagher's doing a great job of defending up the front still, keeping that car ahead. But Hedersheed is putting all the, all the pressure he can onto the leader as it stands. Uh, but there are a fair few battles going on. It's just trying to keep an eye on where the right one is to watch. Yeah, I'll keep the focus at the front here for the minute. Also, Pearson and Micklemore there having a go with Dyson involved in that grouping. Got Traher and Carol Walden still fighting. Stephen Williams has checked out a little bit on that battle. So, Dave Douglas looks like he wants to try and get up into the top 10 as well. He's on slightly fresher tyres. So yeah, taking advantage of those, that slightly fresher rubber at the moment. He's got some good speed at the moment. But Danny G as well is also working his way. So Danny G is definitely not giving up this one. He wants to try and get up those positions back after he lost him. Andrew Dyson has got on to the inside of Josh Micklemore at the moment. They're going to run a little bit wide. This is going to give Ruben Phelps the opportunity to make a bit of a move on on Josh Micklemore at the moment. They're going to be side by side. As, oh, Ruben Phelps just loses the rear end, catches the slide there. Good job from Ruben, but that's going to cost him a little bit of time. That's going to drop him back a little bit. Meanwhile, Joshua Carroll Walden's making a move with Riley Curtis. Riley Curtis down the inside. Joshua Carroll Walden as it stands. Riley Curtis is going to make that move. He's going to slide up in front of JCW. Hold that position. Try and keep him back. JCW is going to get the up and under at the moment. Will he be able to break later? He's got Danny G right behind him as well, fighting with Dave Douglas. These battles are going thick and fast as we've only got eight laps remaining right now. Meanwhile, at the front, Hedersheed is all over the back of Gallagher. Hedersheed is looking to try and put pressure on.
drawing Gallagher at the moment. He's going to try for a little bit of a late breaking move. Try and push Gallagher out wide. Try and force him to that high line so he can get up and underneath him. He needs to make a run. And he looks like he might have one here. He's going to get a good run down to the first corner. He's going to break late here. Go for the underneath. The 035 is going to make the move on the 13. They make a little bit of contact. Little bit of nudging there between the two. Slight sorry, door by door contact. But Hershey's going to make the move. Get in front of Gallagher and take the lead of this race. Yeah, he's indeed he's going to have to defend here because Gallagher's trying to go back down underneath him as well and do exactly the same thing to him as he does. And he gets it done. So this continues this battle. Hedersheed and Gallagher. Hedersheed will get a better run out of that corner and does that. He's going to have to try and close the door again. Watch for Gallagher here to try and jump it again down late under breaks. Can he get it done? We've got Hedersheed a little bit too far up, you'd think. He should get the drive off the corner here and be able to close this back out. These two continue to battle away for the lead of this race. In behind, you can see Andrew Dyson has got the job done on Neil Pearson. But there's a change again potentially happening here for the lead. These two get nice and close together again. Great racing at the front of the field between Hedersheed and Gallagher here. As Hedersheed gets a better drive, he's going to be in front going into the corner. Can't quite close the door yet either. So this is just going to continue this ping pong battle at the front. We've got a caution out. We've got a caution out as Hedersheed was leading there. So Hedersheed is going to be starting in the front there. Who brought the caution out? What happened with that one? Looks uh, like Ryan Nigel Jones Patton. involved in that. Nigel Patton, I think. And I see the 48 of Matt Hunter as well. So we'll see what's happened there. Oh, well, yeah, that was a big one. Big, big incident there. So, um,. So I think it might have been Witcher as well. So Justin Witcher and Ryan Jones. So Witcher's just come up, caught the back of Ryan Jones, and then a big, big incident there. So of some concertina, uh, concertina yeah. on the front straight. Huge, huge accident there, unfortunately, between those guys. But what this does is it gives Hedersheed... P1 for the restart. We've got four laps remaining. This have got to say this is looking good for Hedersheed at the moment. Yeah, Matty Hunter's going to be out of the race, unfortunately. A few cars getting a click through there as well on their way. But, uh, yeah, not a uh, great outcome there for those three. Yeah, really unfortunate there, especially this late in the race, of course. You, it, it's it's always heartbreaking to get taken out of the race right at the end of it because you put so much work in there. And then when it's right at the end of the race, it is just soul-destroying. Stevie Williams up into seventh position. Dave Douglas actually our biggest mover of the night. He's up 19 spots into P11. He'll be looking to close out a top 10 finish here, which would be a great effort from him. Stephen Williams, 15. Ruben Phelps up 11. He's in six. He should get a good restart. Watch for him. Neil Pearson's the one who's going to be vulnerable. And Hamish Gallagher, because they're both on older tyres. Andrew Dyson on fresh rubber, relatively, in comparison to those two. So it could well be here a battle between Hedersheet and Dyson. They're both on rubber of the same age. Yeah, this is going to be a, uh, I think this is going to be a bit of a wild restart here. Uh, we're going to see, we're going to see some very hungry drivers. Dave Douglas up 19 positions as well. He's going to want to try and get inside the top 10. Um, what can Foster do in that very, very, very broken car? Can he manage to creep it up inside the top 10 as well in these next couple of laps to try and uh, at least salvage something from tonight for himself? But, uh, yeah, this is going to be a absolute wild restart here. We're going to have a pretty much a green-white checker here. It's, it's going to be just one lap to go, I think. So it's going to be very close at the end. So this is going to be a absolutely nail-biting one, especially for Daniel Hedersheed. Do we know, Carl, he uh, had a win here in Antica? I'm just checking this. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's... Uh, Something I'm having to check out now, so I, it will be a... I, I won't say anything just as yet. Um, I know he has an in-air time broadcasting. Um, not Certainly not in uh, in the cup. Uh, I don't think he's had a podium, to be brutally honest, but uh, in, in our time. So uh, it will be interesting to see his stats here. In saying that, he's got uh, Andrew Dyson to contend with, Hamish Gallagher, Neil Pearson... Josh Micklemore, all people very familiar 
with heading down victory lane. And uh, he's going to have to contend with them on the restart. The light's out here, so there's going to be two to go as we head around. So uh, we're going to do one lap. We'll get the white flag, and then it will be off to the finish line. So who is going to get it done? Who's hungry enough to get the win? Well, they're all going to be hungry enough, that is for sure. Who's got the rubber life left? How will Daniel Hedersheed handle the restart here? He's going to have to make sure he doesn't get too much wheel spin. Those around him, experts at it. They've done it before at the front. He's got control of the pack, though, so he's going to be the one who decides when to go. He's got to make We're sure that it's smooth, though. We're going to get a green-white checker here. So we'll have the green-white checker situation. If you're new to NASCAR, if you're new to over-racing, green-white checker means we're going to go green-white, and then it's the final time round. So this is the only attempt. This is the last restart. If we get another caution come out, that is that. But Hedersheed is going to launch away. When is he going to drop the loud pedal? It is now. He gets a good start there. Hedersheed gets a nice jump there. Gets away well in front. He's going to have Andrew Dyson right behind him. I think Dyson's going to really push for that second place over Hamish Gallagher at the moment. Dyson is going to be wanting to get this win as well. Look for Dyson to get underneath underneath Hamish Gallagher right here. Hamish Gallagher's not going to want to give up that position. He is going to try his best to keep there. Will he be able to hold it? Can't quite do it. You can see Dyson pushing a little bit wide. That's going to push Pearson up a little bit high and give Josh Micklemore the opportunity to get underneath Pearson. As all oh, Dyson gets a huge snap of oversteer. This is going to give... Gallagher a chance to get underneath and the white flag is out. Final lap is here. Hamish Gallagher is going to get into second place at the moment. How will Dyson be able to recover from this one? Will Dyson be able to get back? Will we see Josh Mickle will get there is side by side for second place? Hedersheed has checked out at the front. Dyson has got a nose ahead at the moment. He's got that second place for the time being. Hamish Gallagher, the last of the late break, is going in deep there. He's going to try and get that position. Can't quite hold it, but Hedersheed is going to come across the line and take a victory here tonight. His first win in the Anscar series. Daniel Hedersheed taking the win on debut with Natari. Andrew Dyson manages to get second place in the end by a nose nothing between those two cars a huge crash in the background as well a lot of cars caught up in that one uh, unfortunately so a lot of cars caught up in the background dave douglas got caught up in that one and then all of the cars behind there absolutely wrecked but it was dave, daniel hennessy andrew dyson hamish gallagher in the top three positions at the end of that one fantastic finish there hennessy getting the restart done perfectly and uh, opening up that big lead at the front of the field. Congratulations as uh, the number one car there. I think that uh, Phil Otto just parked in the fence, but he'll jump out and uh, let Daniel Hedersheed celebrate. Uh, Carl, what I believe is his maiden Anscar Cup win. It is indeed his maiden Anscar victory for Hedersheed. Um, yeah. So Dave Douglas lost it on the exit of turn number four. He lost the rear end there, gone, went around, went up into Matty Ray and uh, mr sheen has not kept it clean there a huge crash at the background and a lot of cars getting taken out and that gave a few of the uh cars a little bit further down the opportunity to jump up a little bit higher but that was a big big accident down the back of the pack so as we bring up the official race results here on fgme cast for the ants car cup series and it was daniel hedersheet taking out his maiden win in his first race in the tari autosport colors as well from Andrew Dyson and Hamish Gallagher, who battled right to the end there. Neil Pearson in fourth place with Josh Micklemore fifth. We had Stephen Williams taking home sixth place with Ruben Phelps in seventh. Stephen Williams, actually biggest move of the night in the end, 16 positions. Then we had Luke Traher in eighth with Danny G in ninth. Riley Curtis rounding out our top 10 for the race this evening. And uh, it was a good one. Second, two nights in a row, great racing at this track. Yeah, that's it. Not the cleanest of racing, but that is short track racing at the heart of it. Unfortunately, these short tracks not easy to get around uh, and very easy to have a mistake on. But we saw some great side by side racing and we saw a nail biter there at the finish. That was absolutely uh, all out of the line there. Um, Daniel Hedersheed she played that perfectly with that restart. It was key for him. He, he he got very lucky that that caution came out when he just got a nose ahead of Gallagher uh, because that helped him out an enormous amount. Andrew Dyson pipping Hamish Gallagher by nothing across the line. Those two were side by side as they got across the finish line. Um, but yeah, that was one heck of a race there. Lots and lots of action. That's going to be one of those races that's going to take a few hours to work out exactly what happened a bit further down the field for sure.
Absolutely, as we uh, we're joined by our uh, podium. Well, we were joined by our podium. They've, uh, I don't know, where we go. We got them back. So we're joined by the podium here tonight, and uh, we've got uh, Daniel Hedersheed, Andrew Dyson, Hamish Gallagher, our front three finishes joining us in the booth. Uh, Hamish Gallagher, congratulations on a P3 there. A really, really close contest between yourself and Andrew Dyson at the line. Yeah, thank you, Stuart. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so, a little bit of a change last night. How did you find the track in comparison? Obviously, completely different cars between the Cup and the uh, Xfinity Series, but uh, how did you find it tonight? Yeah, the track was fine. The racing was pretty poor, though. If we're all not uh, not happy there, so uh, that's um, that is what it is. There's plenty to uh, unwind out of uh, the the race tonight. So, um, but a, a still a strong result, finishing in third. Hamish Gallagher, get you to uh, quickly say uh, thanks to those that you wish to say thank you to. Yep, just thanks for the team, um, you guys for the broadcast, and Anne's car for the league. No drums at all. Hamish Gallagher finishing in third. We'll jump up to Andrew Dyson. Dyson, a, a second place for you tonight, mate. And uh, it looked like some uh, some tough racing out there tonight. Yeah, second place is cool, but um, not definitely not one I'd celebrate. Um, I think you all saw what happened, so I'm pretty pretty dirty in myself, and I'm pretty sure there's a couple guys tonight that uh, are pretty upset with me. So, I, you know, don't know who they are, and I cannot apologise enough. Absolutely, mate, but uh, racing is racing, and uh, you're generally one of the clean ones, mate, so everyone's entitled to make a mistake. So um, you still take home second place tonight and uh, helps uh, move you towards that position um, in the chase. Yeah, it does, but um, I mean, at this stage of the the season, like I think I'm pretty well in there. So, you know, we're not out there racing each other and throwing kitchen sinks at one another to try to get into the chase. It was just a little bit messy tonight from probably a lot of people. But you know, I'm I'm probably dirty on myself more than anyone else out there tonight. Um, where am I going with this? Uh, yeah, we don't really need to be racing each other that hard, and I certainly don't need to be going out there hitting people and ending up with a target on my back. Um, coming up to the business end of the season. And when it does come to the business end of the season, that's not how we want to race, and that's certainly not how I want to be racing against people either. Um, look, Jason obviously had a really fast... Um, well, I think we all have the same car, but he was really fast tonight, and I probably took away an opportunity for him to go over W. And um, Ed was really fast too. We saw how good he was in those opening stints. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry to be a bit of a downer. I can't help it, man. It's uh, Yeah, I feel pretty bad about it. No, mate, it is. It is what it is. You're um, you're uh, generally a pretty positive bloke, mate, and uh, you can hear it in your voice that uh, you're upset um, with uh, with how it's transpired tonight. And uh, all we can say, as I said again, is uh, it's not uh, not typical for you. So um, mistakes happen, mate, and uh, we'll we'll see you back yet uh, on uh, Monday night, hopefully in the trucks. Uh, yeah, I'll jump in for sure. Um, just, I just can I just say anyway, congratulations massively to Daniel. Grabbed his um. Win on debut. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that before, so that's pretty cool. Congrats to him. I'm sure the rest of the boys at um, Ed's team will be real happy with that. At least I'll have something to be happy about, but uh, no doubt they'll be swearing at me. I've got to stop saying it. Um, just thank all the boys on the team. Full credit to them. Um, I suppose we did a little bit better this week with Neil grabbing fourth. Um, I promised them I'd say we were cooking with gas last week and we didn't know we had a gas leak and it blew up in our face. So I've at least got to get that one out there. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what can I say? I'm pretty, yeah, I'm dirty on myself, mate. Yeah, no, that's fair enough, mate. Understand, and um, as usual, as you have done just there, that's uh, good to, to hand out everyone. And um, yeah, we'll catch you uh, back up in the booth shortly, no doubt at all. No worries. Thanks, guys. Thanks for putting on the broadcast. Thanks again to all the Anscar guys. And um, yeah, looking forward to next week and having a cleaner run. No dramas at all. Andrew Dyson, second place there for uh, DPR and uh, simrix.com. Thanks, mate. Peace, guys. As we move across to Daniel Hedersheed, Daniel Hedersheed, a win on debut for Natari Autosports. Uh, mate, it uh, couldn't have gone much better for you tonight. How good was that? No, that was a yeah, really good good debut race. I wasn't expecting it. I was just hoping for a nice and clean race. But the uh, more laps that run, the more I realised I was in with a chance at at least a podium and got the win. Yeah, you sort of you closed out with uh, a lot of pace there. It was really good, at, particularly with that. That we sort of had that very fast grouping of uh, of cautions, and right at the end there, um, Carl was calling it, and uh, he said you just had your nose in front um, against uh, Hamish there to uh, to get across the line, which meant you were in control of the field at that last restart. Um, how important do you think that was to uh, you, you being able to jump away there and and get away with the W? Uh, yeah, that was huge. I, I had to be starting P1 for that restart. Like, I know my tyres, I think I had about 10 laps on the boys behind, but 
yeah, obviously P1 is going to make an easy restart. And, yeah, managed to obviously there was a bit of chaos behind from what I'm hearing and pull away and, yeah, keep it clean for the last few laps. Certainly was plenty of carnage, unfortunately, but that um, is what it is. It was behind you, and um, yeah, you're just managing to be in the right position at the right time. So, with the um, the big move across to Natari Autosport, did you uh, did you have Ed in your ear, just uh, giving you some counselling on how to get through towards the end? Yeah, he was a massive help. Even with the strategy, he got me on the right one. Stayed out long enough for a caution just to hit at the right time, and yeah, pretty much coaching me through. It's a bit intimidating on your first race with these boys to have a whole field behind you, but it worked. Well, mate, you did a really good job um, out at the front there and uh, a massive congratulations to you in uh, taking out your first win in the Ansgar Cup Series and uh, for your team there as well, Natari Autosports. Well done. Yeah, cheers. Just the usual, uh, we'll put you under the pump here, the shout-out to your sponsors. Hey, yeah, well, massive shout-out to Natari, Natari for taking me on to start with and then we've got Race Magazine, Two, flat, two Fat Blokes, uh, Bridgestone Select, FMG Ecast and AJ Insurance. Oh, well done, mate. You got it all in the end there as well. Daniel Hedeshe, congratulations on your first win in Anne's Car Cup, mate. And uh, for Natari Autosport, uh, congratulations again. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Well, Carl, um, a little bit of a change there for us. Not used to hearing a down Dyson uh, in the booth, but um, obviously yeah, a little dirty on uh, himself for, uh, for what happened tonight. But uh, by far and away... A, uh, a minor thing. There were plenty to unfold out of this one with uh, lots of drivers uh, involved in incidents. Not unusual for the uh, the series, uh, particularly with the 30 cars, to see something like that happen. Yeah, well, look, first race back on a short track in a while in the Cup Series, and these things are going to happen, unfortunately. And, look, I, I think Mitch and uh, the DPR, both teams, are a little bit... A little bit sour at the moment. There were a few little incidents in that race between both of their teams and a few of their drivers and quite a few other drivers as well. So, you know, it's not often we uh, we get the free up here and they're not, not sort of celebrating and happy with their positions. It was great to see Hedersheed get that win. Of course, debut in his Cup Series as well, I'm pretty sure. So, you know, not only a debut for Nsari, but debut in Cup. We've seen Daniel Hedersheed, I think, in the Truck Series a couple of times and I think maybe the Xfinity once. Um, but yeah, a fantastic job. Just absolutely stamping his uh, his foot in the door there, and great to see him get that win. And as you say, I think there's going to be a few drivers out there tonight that are going to go, going to have a little bit of a want, a little bit of a word with the uh, the stewards after this race because yeah, there was a few incidents out there tonight that I think a few people are going to be unhappy with. But as is racing, sometimes when you're racing this hard on this shorter track, mistakes can happen, unfortunately, and. Uh, tempers can raise and passion is something that pretty much all racing drivers have running through their veins and i tell you what i'm just having a look up in the uh, main uh, booth for all of the drivers and i don't think it's been a long time since i've seen pretty much the entire field uh, up in the chat room so uh, there's going to be plenty of uh, fireworks going on up there as i said all in the right vein the, these guys are very very professional in the way they carry themselves there won't be any uh, you know, personal stuff or anything like that. But they'll be having a robust discussion, no doubt, about the quality of the racing tonight and uh, what they might do to uh, improve that into next week. So uh, I want to jump up there and have a listen so we can get the inside word. And um, that's us done for the week. Another Thursday night, they keep flying through. So uh, to everyone who's tuned in, I think it's actually been a record week for us this week in terms of people tuning in and watching. So a massive, massive thank you to all of you who've tuned in to uh, to help us do that. We'll have a look at that uh, obviously at the balance of tonight. But uh, thank you to all the usual supporters who come out every uh, night or every uh, week and support us. And uh, Carl, obviously, uh, thanks to you as well as uh, we round out another week here on FGM Ecast, your e-place for pace. We'll be back on Monday night with the Truck Series as usual from 745 uh, we do have an off week for the Cup next week, uh, so Thursday night we will not be broadcasting, and uh, we've got the uh, Oz Pass on Tuesday, and of course the uh, Xfinity Series on Wednesday. So enjoy your weekend wherever you are across this country, whether you're in lockdown or not, and uh, we will catch up with you next Monday evening at 7:45. Thanks very much for tuning in. <laughs>